In this video, we will go through the basics of modeling in inductor software by manually drawing the structure in SOB software using an imported bitmap as a background image. At the same time, we will cover the main geometry editing tools that will be used most often when creating a model in inductor software. Even though you may never use bitmap import, the editing tools covered in this video are essential for modeling in our software. Bitmap import is best used when only a set of drawings like butter papers or PDF files is available. Using a bitmap to produce a structural model is quick and easy, but it has some drawbacks. As there is no way to ensure that the scaling of a bitmap is exact and hard to accurately superimpose the model geometry onto the background image, a certain degree of accuracy will be lost. More precise models can be built using CAD or Revit import. These are covered in separate videos. Since the model geometry cannot be snapped to the bitmap image directly, we will need to use snap to grid snapping mode in SLB. Other snap modes available in inductor software are snap to corner, which will also snap to the midpoint, snap to edge, and if a CAD background is loaded, snap to CAD. When editing geometry in inductor software, the user can see what the software is snapping to from the green square which will behave differently based on the active snap mode. In this video we will use snap to grid and snap to corner. The snap mode can be changed at any time by pressing the snap mode button on the home tab or by using F2 shortcut. Let's set up the grid before importing the image. To do this, go to the settings tab in the main ribbon, then click grid. The default grid size is 1 meter by 1 meter. For drawing over the bitmap, 100mm grid size is sufficient. We can introduce it by setting the minor grid to 1 tenth of the grid size and turning the setting to show the minor grid on. Press OK to go back to the SLB main screen. If we zoom in and out using the middle mouse wheel, we can see that the new grid size has been set. We are ready to import the bitmap. This is done by opening the CAD slash bitmap panel on the home tab, then selecting load under the bitmap button. Use the distance tool in the home tab to check the scale. Note that we are still snapping to the grid. We can see that the scale is not correct. We can change the scale by using the scale command under the bitmap button. To scale the bitmap, we need to pick two points on the bitmap with a known distance between them. With snap mode set to snap to grid and orthogonal mode switched on, we can select the two points and enter the distance, in this case 10 meters. Note that using the orthogonal mode will allow us to snap horizontally or vertically accurately. To verify that the scale is now correct, press zoom extends in the home tab to view the entire model. Now use the distance tool to measure the 10 meter line. Note that we are still snapping to grid. Scaling can move the image away from the origin. As we need the model to be fully in the positive coordinates, we can move the bitmap by using Ctrl plus arrow key shortcuts. We can see the mouse coordinates in the lower left corner. When the mouse moves, the coordinates are updated. Use this as a guide when shifting the bitmap. We are now ready to input the model geometry. Firstly, we will enter a geometry line to define the edge of the slab. Geometry lines can be used not just to define slab edges, but also voids and areas of different thickness, material or loading. To enter the first geometry line, press the slab tool located in the modeling group on the home tab. Making sure that snap to grid and orthogonal mode is switched on, we will move around the edge of the slab to produce a closed geometry line around the slab perimeter, which is best practice and will avoid meshing issues down the road. While drawing, use middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out and hold down the middle mouse button to pan around the model. Note how the orthogonal mode setting allows us to stick to horizontal and vertical lines only without introducing any diagonal lines. To create a closed geometry line, right-click and press Close after clicking a last point. The same can be achieved by using Control and Space shortcut. 
Press the Zoom Extends button to see the entire model so far. We can switch the bitmap image on and off to verify that we're entering the model geometry correctly. We can now select the geometry line using left click. This will allow us to see the coordinates of each node in the property table and verify that the geometry line is closed. Now we can also draw the voids such as lift shafts within the slab perimeter. Again, let's select the geometry line tool and draw these manually while snapping to grid. In the same manner, we can enter the geometry lines to separate the balcony areas. These lines do not need to be closed. They can either right-click and press End to finish drawing the geometry line, or press Space on the keyboard. After meshing, SLB will recognize these as separate flooded areas if drawn correctly. While drawing, we can use the F2 shortcut to change the snap mode to snap to corner in order to snap to the existing slab corners. Notice that we have not created any overlapping geometry lines as they are not needed to create the flooded areas. Of course, you can overlap the lines, but keeping the geometry of the model as simple as possible is a good practice and it helps to avoid meshing issues, especially in models with many diagonal elements. To draw slab folds at the balconies, we will enter geometry lines to specify different slab thicknesses at the fold. Of course, we can draw these geometry lines manually as we have done so far, but there are several ways to draw these folds to ensure the fold width is correct. Right click to exit the slab tool. First, we can copy the balcony geometry line by selecting it, right clicking it, then pressing Copy Global. Now we can adjust the node coordinates in the property table. Click the bitmap button to turn the bitmap image on and off. Note that the property table understands arithmetic, so to move a point down by 1 meter, we can simply put minus 1 next to its y coordinate, then press enter. Another way to draw the fold is to copy the geometry line using two points. Again, left click to select the geometry line, then right click and select the copy with two points option. Make sure snap to grid is on. Select the starting point, then click the end point. Then use Extend with mouse and the clip to trim the geometry line to slab edge. To finish drawing this fold, we will draw another small geometry line while snapping to grid, then join it together using the group command to the existing fold. Now select a new geometry line, right click next to the node and select remove node. This will tidy up the geometry. To create the final fold, we'll copy the geometry line without moving it, then explode it into segments and move them into the correct position. Now select and move each segment individually. Now we'll tidy up this geometry line using set as master and align to wine, extend with mouse and clip and group commands.
To join these segments together, select them using left click while pressing down the shift button. This will select them cumulatively. When done, right click and select group. We can now draw vertical supports for the slab we have just generated. Press the bitmap button in order to show the bitmap. To draw a wall, select the wall tool from the home tab. Note that the default wall thickness is 200mm. We can change this in the property table before we start drawing the wall. Now click on two points to define the wall center line while snapping to grid. Any walls drawn now will have the same thickness. Continue drawing walls in the same manner. The next step is to draw beams. Beams are drawn in the same manner. So first select the beam tool from the home tab and then click on two points to define the beam. Beam sizes can be set via the property table. Draw the columns by selecting the column tool and clicking on the grid. We can change the section shape and size via the property table. To rotate the column by 90 degrees, simply enter the appropriate value in the property table. Press zoom extends to see the entire model. Let's view all the columns we have created so far and color them by size. This is done through the appropriate button in the View tab. You can also see that we've missed some circular columns. To enter those, let's click the Column tool, change the column's shape to circular and enter the column diameter, then draw the columns. This concludes the model geometry input. Let's review the model so far. The slab geometry is entered. We have drawn the slab outline, voids, balconies and slab folds. The supports such as walls, columns and beams have been placed. That is, if we click on the slab area, we cannot select the slab. To keep working on the model, we need to create a finite element mesh, which will allow us to select slab zones. Please continue to the next video. 
This concludes this video. Thank you for watching.